Okay, I'm going to change up your notes a little on this front page. So for 3.3, we're actually going to skip function notation. That's 3.4. But instead of x intercept, write discrete domain. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> discrete domain. And then instead of y intercept, we're going to have a continuous domain. Okay, so a discrete domain is the set of input values, the x's, that consist of only numbers. Okay, so it's your input, remember your input are your x's, um, that are only numbers. And so that's like an example, let me write an example here. Like a number like negative 3, negative 2, 0, 4, okay, they're whole numbers. And they're in the squiggly brackets, okay? And that's it for the domain. It's not what's between negative 3 and negative 2. It is an actual whole number there. Um, which means the com uh, continuous domain is the input, still x values. Um, it's the set of input, and it consists of um, all values in an interval. So an example will be if I said, well, it's graph starts the three, the domain, and so on the left it's boundaries three, but on the right it goes to infinity. Okay? And every little point in between, so 3.2, 3.1, 6, 7, everything is included. Okay? Um, or you might get something where you have a negative infinity to infinity. Okay? So, that would be continuous. I want all those little numbers in between. It's basically a graph um, that is solid, like I'm just drawing anything where it's all connected. Discrete is a graph where you have set points on your graph. Okay? So if we go to the notes for discrete and continuous, 3.3, um, it says number 13, um, even though the 3.2, that 11 and 12 was part of 3.2, and this 13 is just discrete in domain, so pretend that's a number 1. Um, and it gives us this linear function of y equals 15.95x, which represents the cost in dollars of x tickets for a museum. Each customer can buy a maximum of 4 tickets. So that's kind of key, a maximum of 4. Um, I can tell x is the domain, because that's the one I'm doing some math to, to be able to find in the y. So the number of tickets you buy is your uh, domain, it's your input, and your independent variable, and then the cost would be your output or your dependent variable. So uh, we want to find the domain, and is the domain discrete or continuous? And we need to explain. So this, this tells me if I said tickets is my input, my x values, then, then this maximum of four tickets takes into play or goes into play here. Well, a customer can choose. So if I do my domain here, write it out with a squirrely bracket, I know a customer can choose to not buy any tickets. They could buy one, they could buy two, they could buy three, and they could buy four, but it says maximum of four. So that would be my domain. And is it discrete or continuous? So if I plot this, am I going to plot points or am I going to plot something that's connected? Well, I would say this is discrete. It's just going to be points. And I'm going to say it's because you must buy a whole ticket. A whole number of tickets. You can't buy 1.2 tickets. You can't buy, buy half a ticket. Okay? Um, I can buy one, zero, one, two, three, or four, four, nothing else. So that was what's, what makes it discrete. So if I to my domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that would be my input values. This is my equation. 
So I'm going to plug in my input. And that gives me my output. Well, 15.95 times 0 is 0. So that gives me the point 0, 0. And, and on my graph, I could plot that, but I'm going to do the graph after I do this. Uh, fill out the table here. So if my input is 1, then my output is 15.95. So it gives me the point 1, 15.95. Okay. My input is 2, so I'm going to buy two tickets. So my output would be the cost of 3190. So that gives me the point 2, 3190. If my input is buying three tickets, then my output would be 47.85. Oops, there's a blinker. Sorry. And then buying four tickets. I realize I just started writing these wrong because I said two up there and I got in a habit. Sorry. These are all 95s. That started to look wrong. At least these numbers are right because <laughs> I had a cheat sheet here. Okay. So four tickets would cost me $63.80. So I'd have the point and it'd be a $63.80. Now, when I fill out the graph, my input goes along the bottom. Okay, so this would be number of tickets. Oops, so I could have zero, one, two, three, and four. Um, and then my, my range, my Y values goes along the side here. And that is going to be my cost, and it's in dollars. Okay, now I need to be able to go up. It gets much, much bigger, so I'm going to count by each line. It's going to be five, but I'm only going to write the tens in. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Okay, and then I can plot these points to get what my graph should look like. So I have zero, zero. Okay, at one, the cost is fifteen ninety five, so it's just right over that fifteen line. Um, at two tickets, it's going to be thirty one ninety. At three tickets, it's going to be forty seven uh, eighty five. Whoops, if I can get that there, that's a big dot. Um, at four tickets, it's going to be sixty three. 80 okay and I do not connect those and make a line because it's not continuous I do not buy half a ticket only these points work okay so um, now turn to number 15 okay. okay so now instead of it giving me the actual equation I need to make the actual equation and be able to find my domain, okay? So a cereal bar consists of 130 calories. C is the number of calories consumed in the function, and then B is the number of bars of cereal bars eaten. So we want to know if this represents a linear function, and if so, um, we want to write the equations. So I would say yes, it's linear, because for every bar eat, it's going to be a Another 130 calories, that's not changing. So a constant rate of change there. So yes, I'm going to say it's linear. Okay. And then it says uh, write an equation. Well, which one would be my um, domain? Not, uh, not my domain, sorry, my input. Would it be the C or would it be the B? Well, I'm my calories consumed does not affect how many bars I'm going to eat. I can eat calories of any kind, right? So, but the bars of, of uh, cereal bars that I eat, the number of them does determine how many calories are actually entering my body when I eat a cereal bar. So, it's going to be C is the output, those calories is the output, because it depends on the number of bars I eat. So, every bar I eat, it's 130 calories, so it's 130 times B. Okay, and then it wants us to find the domain. Well, I could, well, first it says, okay, okay, sorry, before I even started that, is the domain discrete or continuous? We need to think about that. The question is, can I only eat a whole bar, 
Or is it possible to eat a partial bar? Well, I, nothing says I have to finish a cereal bar. I could eat one bite. Um, so it would be continuous because, like, you need partial bars. So you might want to, when you explain it, put something like that. Um, and so, therefore, my domain is going to be in interval notation. I can eat no cereal bars, therefore, I can eat no calories. Okay, so my domain, which is number of bars, could be zero. Um, and this doesn't limit me to how many cereal bars I, I have to choose from. So, so technically, if you wouldn't get sick or something, you could eat up to infinity number of bars. Don't recommend that. But as the problem, problem is posed to us, there is no maximum number. There is no, the, the box only contains six cereal bars or anything like that. So, but it would still be an interval because there's nothing saying you have to finish or eat. The entire bar. Okay.